Welcome everyone to this week's weekly community call. Uh, we hold these calls every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. UTC. Today I've got some updates on snapshot, uh, the current snapshot proposal about delegating safe voting power to myself. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. I wanted to go over some um, recent cover buys that have been uh, consistent cover buys from teams that are buying coverage for their platform or DAO. There's a couple of forum proposals that I'll highlight in review. Um, I'll let you talk a little bit about the Bootnote resource update, and then we'll go through some of our standard updates for the week. So I'll let Hugh give his weekly team update. I'll cover the last week in review for cover sales. I'll talk about some of the recent single day cover sales, which have been very sizable. Talk about the active coverage uh, by cover type, and then it'll be the time on the call where we have an open forum where anybody can bring up anything that um, I haven't covered, we didn't highlight, or questions that they'd like to ask. So without further ado, I will jump right into things. On this first section, we have some updates on governance and community updates. So here I've got that review of the snapshot vote, some forum posts, and then some general community updates. So the first slide here, um, I'm highlighting the snapshot vote that's live. You can find that in the thread for today's call. But this vote is uh, was transitioned last week. I put this proposal up previously for discussion about potentially delegating safe voting power to myself to represent Nexus Mutual and safe DAO governance. Uh, this is open for voting until tomorrow. Um, voting ends at 12 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. UTC. The two choices are highlighted here, but essentially the choices are to either delegate to me or to not delegate to me. You can find the forum posts uh, tagged in the snapshot voting thread as well, and there I highlight some of the things I think we can focus on and the ways in which our communities can find some synergy and how our missions are very similar and alike. Um, members can participate in this discussion by reviewing and commenting on the forum, offering any feedback on the areas of focus that I've highlighted, and then of course, reviewing and voting on this snapshot proposal. Um, currently we have participation, but for anybody who hasn't uh, reviewed and voted yet, um, I'm hoping that everybody gets a chance to do so. Uh, Vincent has a proposal on the forum that's still under discussion. This would be allocating some of the safe that we received in the SafeDAO airdrop to buyback WNXM. Um, again, this is still open for review and discussion. Currently, safe is non-transferable, but Vincent is hoping to get a consensus check to achieve some soft consensus on what we'd like to do when safe does become transferable. So in this proposal, he's highlighted that if safe is worth above 70 cents, that we'd sell 50% um, for WNXM. And if safe is worth above a dollar, then he would propose to sell the remaining 50% 50 uh, 50 for WNXM. Um, again, another note is that half of the safe allocation that we received in the airdrop will vest for four years. So the 50% that would be transferable once they unpause the token contract, I think is somewhere around 70,000 safe or so, um, just for some context. But uh, Vincent will trans transition this to a snapshot vote after the review and discussion period. Um, once that is up for a vote and he pulls members on this, I will let everybody know and probably review this on another weekly community update. Um, but we'll also share those kind of updates in our weekly newsletter as well. Um, I wanted to highlight some of the uh, DAO and platform coverage. Uh, we've seen some consistent cover buys come through. So Gelt Finance is an example. We've seen six consecutive months of cover buys from Gelt. They are a non-custodial fintech solution that allows everyday people to access DeFi savings accounts. People can connect their bank accounts using Plaid directly to Gelt's protocol and they then deposit funds into mstable which utilizes ave as a yield source so everyday people can access uh DeFi high yielding savings accounts and what gelt does is they offer their users uh coverage which is a bundled protocol cover that has gelt mstable and ave v2 protocol cover bundled together and they will cover individuals using their platform for up to a hundred thousand dollars per user so they're helping to onboard new users in DeFi, and they are offering native protection with Nexus Mutual Cover. So um, very promising to date. They've bought a little bit more than $2 million in cover sold over the last six months. 
So consistent cover buys coming in from the Gelt team, and as their TVL grows, um, their cover buys will as well. Nested is another one. So they've uh, been buying protocol cover for the TVL on their entire platform for the last four months. Um, Nested is a DeFi portfolio management protocol that gives users the ability to build and manage their portfolios. They tokenize um, those indices as NFTs, and there's a lot of interesting functionality in there, <clears throat> such as the ability to copy trade other people. Um, and so what they've done is they've bought protocol cover for their entire TVL. In the announcement they made, they um, committed to buying coverage for up to $5 million of user funds as TVL increases. So um, here's another one that's pretty consistent. So far, the Nested team has bought more than $4 million in coverage to date. So again, as their TVL increases, we'll see uh, additional cover buys. And then I'll hand this over to Hugh, um, but Hugh posted an update on the forum, which you can find in the thread for today's call. So I will let Hugh talk a little bit about this resource update. Hugh? Cool. Thanks, Lee. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, so I guess most of the details are um, on, the, on the forum, but um, essentially what's happened is that Bootnode have been helping us over, I guess, a number of um, months. Um, they, they, first, um, they first helped us out with the CowSwap integration, um, which is going to be released as part of Nexus V2. Um, and, and then they've also been working on um, the covered vaults scoping, um, which has been completed. And then the next thing that was approved was for, for them to um, basically move on to the development work of the, the covered vaults project. Um, but essentially what we've, um, I guess, decided to do here is um, just kind of delay the development of that um, for a few months because basically um, we've got, our biggest priority is, I guess, is the core team is, is shipping V2, um, and we would really benefit from additional resources to mainly bring up the test coverage as high as possible. Um, and Bootnode um, developers, the people we've been working with, um, are very up to speed on the um, the state of the Nexus V2 contract, so they're, they're going to be the fastest um, available resource for, it, um, for to help us here, so to like, get up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, and to be honest, we can't really do much with covered vaults until V2 is live. So it really makes sense to kind of um, just use that same resource um, on a different, um, helping us out shipping V2 and then come back to the covered vault stuff. So um, we're, we're not kind of not doing what um, was, was voted on by members. It was just going to delay it a little bit um, given the timing and, and, and what's happened recently. So. Um, just wanted to let everyone know that that's um, that that's what's happening, and yeah, I guess also like the the boot node team are kind of just being um, incredibly helpful and responsive here. So um, they kind of um, chopped and changed a bit in the last minute when we reached out to them to see if they could help us here. Because um, yeah, anyway, they've been, they've been super supportive for what we've been doing. So hope that's hope that's clear. Um, anyway, yeah, if anyone has any comments or questions, do let me know. Thanks, you. And I will turn it back over to you to provide your weekly core team update. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I guess yeah, lots going on. So V two is obviously the the biggest thing. That's what we're um, focused everyone on. Um, the, the 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 Solidity devs are kind of co-located in at Bucharest um, this week um, to um, really crunch through some stuff. Um, it all seems to be going going well. Um, working through a few minor edge cases, but um, but but is progressing. Um, we've also making some offers to some other um, developers recently. So um, hopefully they turn out um, positively and we have um, some more people on the team soon. So I think I think in general that, um, you know, it's one of the bigger things that I've talked about a few times, but I'll say it again here, um, is that we're a bit under-resourced on developers. We have been for, for some time. Um, but then um but we've it's essentially that's what we've been focusing on is um is hiring a few people over the last few months and and part of that's because um yeah well we've been under resourced but but also the market um the developers has become a bit more friendly over the, over the past um six months so um so that's that's been going well i, I guess on the other side of things um i guess some of you probably noticed that the eth work um has has been moved um there's a, there's currently an ongoing buyback um for wrapped nxm happening there um once it's kind of finished we'll we'll let everyone know that um that it's that it's been completed and and what the, res, the kind of results or end, end results of that were um and I'm just trying to think 
if there's anything else major going on. Um, I don't think so, but I feel like I am forgetting something, so I might jump back in if, if, I, if I remember it. Yeah, and feel free. Yeah, any questions, obviously happy to take them. Um, if there are no questions, I will move on. Uh, if anybody does have any questions, feel free to drop those in the Community Calls text channel. Um, we can get those answered. And Hugh, if there's anything you think of, just let me know, and, uh, and I'll give you uh, back the mic. Uh, I'm, I'll do a review of the last week in cover sales. So all of this data is sourced from Nexus Tracker. You can look at Nexus Tracker to find historical cover sales, active coverage, and um, lots of metrics and analytics about the mutual. So looking at the last week in cover sales, uh, we saw a pretty sizable increase in cover buys. Um, the totals for the last week, uh, almost 22.5 million in cover sold and $66,810 in fees earned. Some of the largest cover buys that we saw come through were for Curve protocol cover, Ave V2, Beefy, M Stable, and Nested. We also saw sizable cover buys come through for some other protocols like GMX, Ease, the um, bundled coverage for Gelt, M Stable, and Ave V2, and others. Um, the Die denominations pretty heavy this week with uh, the majority of cover sold and fees earned coming in die. So <clears throat> nearly 97% um, cover sold and die, 3% in ETH, and fees earned about 93% um, in die and 7% in ETH. Um, but we've definitely seen an uptick in cover buys to date. Um, just as a comparison, last week we had shared that uh, in just one day we saw um, almost 18 million in covers sold and more than 40,000 in fees earned in just one day's worth of cover sales. Um, this week, yesterday, we sold more than that in one day. So we sold 22.36 million in cover and earned more in fees. So more than $47,700 in fees earned. So looking at the week-to-week -week growth in single-day cover sales, it's up 25% and week-over-week -week growth in fees earned is over 20%. So just a notable two days of cover sales, we're definitely seeing an increase. So people are starting to deploy more funds in DeFi and are securing their deposits in some of these major protocols with protocol cover. So I thought that was really interesting and wanted to highlight that on the call today. I'll talk a little bit about active coverage by cover type. Um, we provide detailed breakdowns in the newsletter every week, but just as a high level overview, we can see that the total active cover for, um, as of the 10th anyways, is roughly um, 179.1 million in total cover. We can see the majority of coverage is for protocol cover. So 145.55 million in active coverage protocol cover. Custody cover has a little bit more than um, 25.1 million. E2 staking cover still around 7.1 million. And yield token cover we've seen decrease a bit um, from last week. And that stands at 1.3 million in active coverage. Um, again, you can find all this info on the Nexus tracker and we'll have a breakdown of active coverage by you know protocol and platform in the newsletter that comes out tomorrow as well but at this point in the call it's an open forum um, if anybody has any questions if there's anything that we didn't cover that anybody would like to ask about or if you have any questions in general about the mutual um, feel free to ask now um, you can ask in voice or you can ask any questions in the community calls text channel as well okay well if there are no questions um, I can wrap up the call for today. Um, thank you everybody for joining us on today's call. Um, always a lot of updates to go through. I appreciate everybody taking the time and spending some time with us to stay caught up on all things Nexus Mutual. Um, I hope everybody has a great rest of their day and a wonderful rest of their week. We will see you on the call next week.